So what should we do when they turn our drone into goo? The Pentagon is blaming Russian fighter jets for causing a U.S. drone to crash into the Black Sea. Sorry, person of color sea. <laughs> On Tuesday. Worse, the drone was shot down just two days after its warranty expired from Radio Shack. <laughs> Putin denied responsibility so quickly, he's been made an honorary Clinton. <laughs> Sp- Those jokes never get old. Speaking of Russia, Ron DeSantis is getting pushback from fellow righties for insinuating that further U.S. involvement in the war in Ukraine is not vital to our national interest, unless you think our national interest is starting World War III. But at this point, with so much already invested in Ukraine, withdrawing support is easier said than done. I just came up with that. (laughs) Maybe as president, DeSantis might be able to do what no Biden can do, pull out in time. (laughs) Uh, KT applauding that one. Wow. (laughs) Meanwhile, the Pentagon's focused on more important stuff. Aliens. And not the ones complaining about our free food and hotel rooms. A top official says they could be visiting our solar system in a big mothership. Mother? And releasing probes near Earth. Which might explain that weird soreness I feel when I sit down. This as the Navy plans to increase climate spending almost 40 percent in 2024. They're asking Congress for four hundred million dollars for electric vehicles and solar microgrids because nothing inspires fear like a battleship with an extension cord. (laughs) I can see it now. We can't go to war, Mr. President. Someone forgot to charge up our aircraft carriers. KT, there's a lot of parts to this uh, segment, so uh, I don't know which topic you want to hone in on. Personally, I don't think uh, the drone getting close to our plane or the vice versa is that big of a deal. No. Yeah, I mean, it, what's the Black Sea anyway? It's almost kind of <laughs> well, Russia. It's international water, so yeah. it's a, a deal, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. Now, DeSantis is right. Mm-hmm. When he talks about vital national interests, there's the difference. There's vital national interests for which we would go to war, mm-hmm. and there are interests and national interests for which we might try to affect the outcome, but we don't necessarily send in the Marines. DeSantis was right to say this is not in our vital national interest. Mm -hmm. However, you want to stop the Ukraine war in about six months? Okay, here's the answer. Yes! Okay, here's the answer. Number one, stop the war on American fossil fuels so that American oil producers and gas, natural gas producers start pumping it out. We become not just energy independent, we become energy Dominant, that's the word. Mm-hmm. And that drives the price of oil and natural gas down. Russia's b- bankrupt within six months because it requires all of that. that. That's how it's paying for the war is the high price of oil and gas. Within six months, Russia's bankrupt. You force them to the negotiating table. You find a deal. And then Ukraine wins the peace because five years after the fighting stops, Ukraine is a fully integrated economy into Europe. And what's Russia? Low gas prices, it's bankrupt. Mm -hmm. A war that it didn't win, it's a pariah state. So Russia's finito. Well, you know, that sounds too easy. The great thing about uh, the five viewers that a lot of them don't watch the show, so I'm going to just say what you said tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to call it the Gutfeld Doctrine. Tom, steal it outright. No one will think think that I stole it from KT. Oh, I like it. I like it. Do you... Do you agree that it could it be that simple? I don't know if it is, Greg. I was going to talk about the aliens. Yes, please do. I know you hate them. Yeah, no, I don't believe in aliens because I believe in Jesus, and I feel like he would have mentioned the aliens. Mm, it's a, yeah. I think he would have said something. I mean, I don't think he would have said what planet they are on, but I think he would have mentioned. He would be like, I, I, I will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and I'll try to get here before the spacemen. You know, I think he would have mentioned that they were, you know. Maybe he didn't want to spoil the surprise. I mean, no, that's a possibility. But I. I what if, OK, what if Jesus was an alien? Can I say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> is that sacrilege? I think, yeah, that would, if anything is, maybe that's uh, that's it. <laughs> I'm a Catholic, you know. <laughs> no, that's Barely. why I should take it back, Greg. <laughs> No, but I mean, it's like if you have if you have um, a more universal idea of the afterlife, the afterlife could be. But see, this is a thing about doctrine and you believe it. You believe it a certain way, but it could be, you know, you could be living a simulation. You don't know. I mean, it could be 
You know, anything. Yeah, you like that simulation thing. I'm not that into that. I know, I know. Mm. Yeah. Doesn't have as interesting reading yeah. as, as Catholicism. Let's move on from this okay. very <laughs> awkward religious moment yeah. that I'm sharing. <laughs> Kat, do you want to cover uh, uh, aliens or drones or DeSantis or climate funding? There's a lot of options there. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Uh, the climate funding actually concerns me less than the amount of funding. Mm -hmm. uh, the military budget that Biden is demanding is either the largest in peacetime or the largest in history, period, depending on who you ask and how yeah, they look at those numbers. Spending. If you look uh, at inflation, he's actually cutting defense spending. But we're supposedly not at war and not thinking about going to war, and I just don't buy it. I just don't buy it. I have some concern about it. I think there's a lot of distraction of if anybody asks any questions about this war, there's a lot of pile on of, well, is this person a Russian operative? When really you have many legitimate reasons to question this and you mm -hmm. should question most things. But to question this in particular, when you look at history and also when you look at the present and it's, it's just that kind of catch all term when anyone dares to do it. That yeah. makes me want to question. You're in Putin's more. pocket. See like that. Yeah. No, I was just saying that's what they say. Yeah. I don't say you're in Putin's pocket. You're in Putin's pocket. pocket. You're Putin, a puppet. And then like... Putin and then, apologist. Yeah, and then like a bunch of other people be like, ooh, got him. And it's like, who are these people? What, yeah. do, you, what do you do? Spend two weeks in Putin's pocket and they call uh. you Putin. You're in Putin's pocket. All right, Douglas. <laughs> Thoughts on Ukraine? I'm sure you have some. You went there. Yeah, I was there recently. Um, uh, I'm more interested in the aliens, I have to Okay, say. let's go with the aliens. Well, because... <laughs> You know that, that that cartoon we all had when we were growing up, where the uh, like little men with like antenna like that get out of a spaceship and they, they they come to a human being and they say, "Take us to your leader." It feels to me like that we're close to that point, mm -hmm. and that when we introduce them to the president, they're going to say, "You're joking, right?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is you know. No, <laughs> Trump would be great with the aliens. Oh, he'd love oh, yeah. it. Oh, come on. He, you, you guys got to try the steaks. Have you say, had a Trump steak? He'd say we fell in love. We fell in love. We fell in love. And by the way, best aliens. They're the best aliens ever. N no wall. No wall for these aliens. Right? You know? Anyway. That's not even a good impression. I don't try. Story of my life.